Now, what does it mean to be made whole? Well, we'll see here in my key verse for today that Paul, he speaks about being complete and being thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so I would ask you today, are you thoroughly equipped for every good work? I would ask you today, are you thoroughly equipped to take on and to face the world? You see, this again is what it means to be made whole. Now, when you look at yourself, what do you see? Our first thoughts on answering this question would cause us to consider our outward appearance, wouldn't it? We would think about what our hair looks like. We would think about what our face looks like. We would even take a look in the mirror to see what our clothes, what our outfit looks like. When we take a look at ourselves in the mirror, we are taking a moment to examine ourselves, aren't we? We are trying to make sure everything is in order as far as our looks go. Essentially, we are checking for any flaws. We are checking to see if there are any blemishes. We are checking to see if there are any imperfections, if you will. And if we notice that something is off, if we notice that there's something wrong we are going to take time to make some corrections Mm -hmm. so that we look good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seemingly, we have no problem examining our outward appearance, do we? Yet, if I were to ask you, if I were to ask someone to look into their eyes and to tell me what they see, I tell you today that there would be struggle. You see, the eye is very telling of the truth. You see, the the eye being very telling of the truth, the truth, I tell you, is a, a very funny thing, isn't it? You see, when you when you peer into your eyes or into the eyes of another, there is so much that you can learn. There is so much truth that you can learn, and that truth, it can be quite scary. Jesus, he spoke about this thought when he said that the lamp of our body is our eyes. Jesus, he specifically said that if your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. On the opposite side of that, Jesus said if your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. You see, the eye is the window to your soul. When you look into your eyes, you can get a good sense. You can get a good idea of what is happening on the inside, what is happening within your own heart. So when you look into your eyes, again, I ask you today, what do you see? Do you see light in those eyes of yours? Or are those eyes dark? Are those eyes empty? That is what I ask of you today. Now, some folks are afraid to look into their eyes because they are afraid of what they will see. They are afraid of that truth. They are afraid of what they would learn about themselves. Because again, what they learn about themselves or what we learn about ourselves can be quite scary. That said, as it is seemingly good for us to examine our outward appearance, what we look like before we go out of our homes, I would tell you again today that it is even more important for us to examine our inner person. Mm -hmm. It is important for you to examine your soul. As you know, I am a preacher that loves to focus on our inner person. I love to focus on the soul. So let's for a moment today, imagine that we could pull out a big old mirror, 
that would allow us to see a reflection of our soul. What would our soul look like in this mirror? I believe that there are a few ways that your soul could appear in this mirror that I want to mention to you all here briefly for a moment. See, one soul could look like a jigsaw puzzle that has just been poured out and scattered across a table. See, to this soul, there is no structure. There is no order. Some pieces of the puzzle, they landed upright so that some of the pictures of the pieces can actually be seen. Other pieces of the puzzle, they landed turned over. And if you know anything about a jigsaw puzzle, you know that when you turn the puzzle piece over, there is no picture. There's just cardboard. This soul, I want you to understand, it is a scattered and a broken mess. You see, there is much work that needs to be done on this particular soul. There is another kind of soul. There is a soul that again could reflect a jigsaw puzzle again. Yet this puzzle, its border pieces have been put together. But the inner pieces, they're not all connected. So essentially, there is a laying of a foundation for this soul, but there is little structure. There is little structure or there is no structure that is built up on the foundation of this soul. Any structure that is built up, it has all kinds of holes in it. The puzzle, it is not complete. So again, there is still much work that needs to be done so that the picture of this puzzle, so that the image of this soul, if you will, can be seen. Lastly, I tell you, there is another appearance, another image here that could be reflected in this mirror. There is a soul whose appearance, again, looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Yet this puzzle, it has been completely put together. You know, if you have put a puzzle together, you can still see the lines to the jigsaw puzzle pieces. So the lines to the pieces of this puzzle, they can still be seen, but the image, it stands out. And the image that can be seen, it is a beautiful image. It is a a beautiful picture that can clearly be seen by those that can see it, by those that can view it. And this picture, this image, I want you to understand, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful. Because the picture can be clearly seen, the lines to the pieces of the puzzle, they begin to be ignored as the beauty of the image takes over. And that is what is admired. So in summary, some of us would see a scattered mess when we would peer into such a mirror. There is no picture. And if we're talking about the soul there, there is no light that can be seen. Some of us, we would see an incomplete picture with flaws and with blemishes appearing in this mirror. And with those flaws and with those blemishes, there is little to no light that can be seen in this soul. Some of us, in the end, we might look into this this spiritual mirror, if you will, and we will see a picture that is complete, that is filled in, and there's a whole bunch of light that can be seen in that mirror. The image, it is full. So I would ask you to consider this today. If you could look into such a mirror, what do you think you would see reflecting back at you? Would you be whole? 
Would you be kind of put together or would you be a totally scattered and broken mess? If your soul is scattered, if your soul is broken, if your soul is incomplete today, I would then ask you, how would you go about mending the pieces? How would you go about putting your soul together? How would you go about being made whole today? The reason why I focus on our soul and its condition so often is because our soul, it is what makes us go. You have heard me say that before. Our soul, it is what makes us operate. A soul that is a scattered mess, I want you to understand that that is a soul that cannot function. That is a soul that I want you to understand is dead. A soul that is incomplete, it is a soul that functions erratically. One minute it operates well, and then the next minute it ain't operating at all. The incomplete soul I would liken to a light bulb that repeatedly flickers on and flickers off. Now, little do we realize, but a lot of us believers, we actually fit up under the category of the jigsaw puzzle that is slowly being put together. The edges, the border has been put together and some of the inner pieces for some of us or a lot of the inner pieces for the rest of us, they have began to be filled in. Yet the picture to our puzzle, the picture to the puzzle, our soul has not fully been made whole. As you have heard me state in recent weeks, nobody is perfect. Don't think for a second that you are whole, that you are complete. Don't think for a second that you are perfect. I hope you heard that today. I hope you heard that loud and clear today because there are many believers living in the world today that believe themselves to be perfect. We ain't perfect. Not just yet. Paul in his letters he touched on the thought that nobody is perfect, including the servant of God. To the Philippians in the third chapter, we find that Paul, he humbly acknowledged that he, a servant of God, was not perfect and that he himself had not yet attained righteousness. He had not yet attained perfection. This again was a man that went around on his missionary journey, spreading the word of God, teaching and preaching, humbly acknowledging that he himself had flaws, that he had blemishes, that he was not perfect. How can we do that ourselves? Paul, again, he was telling the Philippians that he was not yet made whole. This, again, was an acknowledgement from Paul that he had flaws, that he had blemishes, that he was imperfect. However, Paul, he would go on to say that though he was not yet whole, he still strove to be made whole as he would press towards the upward call of God. To the Corinthians, Paul, we will see, he said that he genuinely believed that he and that others who were like him could be made whole and obtain the upward call of God. He wrote that for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see clearly face to face. Paul said that we know in part now, but if we were to simply keep 
pressing towards the upward call of God, our image will be made whole. It will be made complete. In reaching for the upward call of God, Paul, he told the Corinthians that he had to stop acting like a child that he had to grow up. If you desire to reach for that upper call of God today, I'll tell you, grow up. Stop acting like a child. When he was a child, Paul said that he spoke as a child, that he understood as a child, that he thought like a child. And if he thought like a child, he acted like one as well. Yet Paul said that when he became a man, he learned how to put away childish things. So again, in other words today, if you desire to strive towards that upper call of God, if you desire, and I hope that you desire this, I hope that you desire to be made whole, I hope that you desire to be made complete, you can't go about doing it as a child. Do you desire to be made whole today? The upward call of God, I want you to understand, is the heavenly calling for which we ought to strive for, in which we ought to strive to be partakers of. Do you desire to be a partaker of the upward call of God today? You see, the Lord does not desire for us to be a scattered mess. Nor does the Lord desire for you to be incomplete. God, he desires for you to be made whole. He desires for you to be complete. So why do we not desire that for ourselves today? If you truly do desire to be made whole, you must stop trying to put the puzzle pieces of your soul together erratically as a small child would do. You see, there are better ways to put a puzzle piece in place or to put a puzzle together than to just randomly grab at pieces and try to make them fit together. Some, when they put a jigsaw puzzle together, they'll actually flip the puzzle over and put the, uh, put the puzzle together upside down without even seeing the picture. And people do that, that do that, I tell you, they are geniuses to be able to do that. I marvel at those who I've seen do that before. Now, the most common method that we are probably all familiar with is to first start by putting the edges of the puzzle together, laying a foundation. Either way, I would tell you that there is some thought process to methodically put the puzzle together. So if we truly desire to make ourselves whole, to make ourselves our soul whole, I tell you that we must do so methodically. We must do so, in other words, smartly. When I was a kid, I learned that it was better to put a complicated puzzle together with some help rather than trying to do it all by myself. Our soul, it is far more complicated to put together than the common jigsaw puzzle. So I would tell you today that help is certainly much warranted. Don't be trying to put your soul together all on your own. You can't do it. As Paul said, we only know in part because we see things in a very dim mirror. So we cannot put our soul together by ourselves if we wanted to do so. We require some really good and wise help. So we ought to seek that. Now, the question that all of us have to answer today is whose guidance whose assistance will we choose to help us put this puzzle together? As you have heard me say before, 
there are several doctrines that circle around our world today that will suggest to you how you can make your old, your soul whole. There are several doctrines out there that will tell you today how you can feel, keyword, feel like you are a whole in your soul. Yet, if those who would abide by these doctrines, those who would live by these doctrines, if they could look into that mirror, if they could see their soul, they will find their soul to be distorted and unrecognizable. They will find their soul to be bent out of shape. They will find that their soul is incomplete. See, I would not seek the world's help in this matter. If I were you, if I were trying to put my soul together. In our scripture today, Paul, he encouraged those that have chosen to press towards the upper call of God. Again, I hope that is you. He has told us to continue in the things which we have learned and been assured of. We'll see that in the 14th verse nor from whom we have learned those things. You see, Paul is saying that what we learned as a child in the faith, those things will help us to grow and to be more complete so that we can take on and face the world being thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the question would be, well, what did we learn as a child? Now, this is a very fascinating question, isn't it? You see, some of us literally grew up in the church pews. Some of us, we, we did not come up in the church pews. Yet here we are today. We are of genuine faith. So this again makes that question a very interesting one. In order for us to be whole, in order for us to be complete and alive in our soul, I would tell you today that we must be born again. You see, I would suggest to you, just as Peter did, that when all of us first began to believe, we did so as newborn babes, being born again through our faith in Jesus Christ. As newborn babes, Peter said that we should desire the pure milk of the word, that we may grow by the word of God. Born again, believers, we are born again through the sound doctrine of God, not by any other doctrine, but by the doctrine of God. You see, it is the doctrine of God that showed us through our faith we can be saved, that we can be made whole, that we can be made alive in our soul. So in order for us to be whole, in order for us to be complete, in order for us to be alive in our soul, the born again believer should thirst the born again believer should crave for the sound doctrine of God. Did you hear that there today? It is the word of God that gives us our strength. It is the word of God that gives us our nourishment. We'll see there in the 14th and in the 15th verse there from Paul there in second Timothy. Paul said, from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. From the very beginning of your faith, is what Paul is saying there, you have known the Scriptures, which are able to make you wise, Paul said there. Not only are they able to make you wise, they are able to make you wise for salvation, for deliverance through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Do you believe today that you can be made whole 
through the word of God. I tell you today that I believe. I believe that the word of God can and is what is making me complete. That is what's making me whole. Let me tell you something about my testimony here today. You see, my faith, my walk of faith, it began at a very early age in the pews of Zion Hill under the guidance of Reverend H.J. Taylor. You see, I had excellent Sunday school teachers that taught me about Christ from the time that I could hear and understand and utter a word. My faith, I want you to know, it began to mature. It matured further under the teaching and under the preaching of the sound doctrine by my dad that taught me to lead on the Lord. You see, I desire to be made whole in all of the teaching that I can recall from the beginning of my faith taught me that I should lean on the one who made me, on the one who saved me. Were you taught the same thing? If you aren't taught the same thing, you're hearing it for the first time today. Lean on the Lord if you desire to be made whole in your soul. If you desire to be made well. If you desire to be made he, if you desire to be healed, lean on the Lord. Mm-hmm. You see, I am the end product today of the sound doctrine of God. Mm-hmm. This is a doctrine that moved me away from selfish ambitions and, and desires for the world that go unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. This is a doctrine that has taught me to let go of hate to let go of wickedness and to let the love of God enter into my soul. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of God has shown me the Lord's sacrifice for not just my soul, but for the souls of the many. The healing that he offers me along with his mercy and his salvation is what this doctrine has shown me. So long as I genuinely believe in him, this doctrine has showed me that I can be made complete, that I can be made well, that I can be made whole. Rather than trying to take on the world by myself and allowing the world to continue to hammer down on my soul and to break apart my spirit, I learned as a child Believe, have faith, trust in, lean on, depend on the Lord. As a child, through the sound doctrine of God, I learned that if I just reach out and grab a hem of his garment, I will be made well. That is to say that I will be healed in my soul that I will be made complete, that I will be made whole. Are you grabbing for the hem of his garment today? If you truly desire to be made whole, are you, are you grabbing for the hem of that garment? Are you leaning? Are you depending on, are you trusting in the Lord? See, if we are to lean on him, if we were to grab onto the hem of his garment and to be made whole in our soul. What this means further for us is that all of our burdens, all of our afflictions, our iniquities, our flaws, our blemishes, our imperfections, they will be corrected in that mirror. It won't be us that is doing it. It will be the Lord standing right there by you fixing up that tie of yours, making sure that dress is laying on you just fine, making sure your hair ain't nappy, that it is straight. It, in other words, will be God who is fixing you up. It will be God that is mending, that it will be God that is correcting your soul. It will be God that is putting the puzzle pieces of your soul in place. Do you hear that today? Most importantly, do you believe that today? 
sadly, many of us are like an impatient child whose parents are trying to fix them up while looking in the mirror there with them. The impatient child just wants to get away from them and is happy with how they look, whether their shirt is out of their pants with one half of it in or if their hair is nappy. See, some of us, we are simply combative when it comes to the Lord trying to correct us. With God trying to put the puzzle pieces in place. With God trying to, in other words, make us whole. Why are we so combative with the Lord? This thought always runs through my head. Why are we so combative, so argumentative with the Lord? You see, some of us, we hear the word of God and we don't like much of what we hear. Why? Because like the writer of Hebrews said, like the writer of Hebrews wrote, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. See, it pierces. It cuts deep. And it cuts deep with the truth. The piercing of the word of God hurts. And some of us, we, we cannot stand that pain. We can't stand the pain of his truth. So what do some of us do? We run away from God. We do our best to dodge that sword. Some of us, we come back. Some of us, we parry that sword with our own sword, with our own words, with our own doctrine that would do nothing but fail. Our sword, if it were to clash with the sword of God, would simply crumble and fall apart. That's what so many puzzles are doing in our world today. That's why so many puzzle pieces are scattered across the table. That's why, in other words, so many souls are broken today. Rather than being combative and thinking that something is wrong with the word of God because it may paint us in a bad light, we must figure out what is wrong with us that we would oppose God's truth about who we are. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with us that we will find something out of place or wrong with what we see in the mirror when all the mirror is doing is reflecting back the truth. Mm -hmm. There are some people who you can offer a rebuke to and though they may initially be combative, they will eventually listen and they will make corrections. But then there's another group of people. Others, on the other hand, they instantly frown at any rebuke. You know this type very well, I believe. At any type of rebuke, they'll raise their voice and then they'll storm off without heeding the rebuke. I tell you today that we cannot be this way when it comes to the word of God, we cannot be this way if we truly desire to be made complete, if we desire to be made whole. You see, the word of God is simply trying to heal and mend our spirit that is often trounced upon and broken apart by the world. As we see here in my key verse for today, scripture, that is again the word of God, is profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, so that the man or the person of God may be what? May be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Without the word of God, could you imagine what you, what we would be? You see, some believe that the world would be better off without God. But I tell you today that there would be no light in the world if it wasn't for God. The world would be filled with a bunch of empty and broken husks. 
We, in other words, will be a shell of the person that we are today. What good would you and I be in the world today if we were just another empty husk? You see, that is the kind of world that I feel we are living in today. That is why I preach so often about the condition of our soul. I feel that we are living in a world that is filled with many empty husks, with many, in other words, lifeless shells or lifeless souls. And then we have the audacity to sit back and wonder why people don't care for each other. Sadly, it seems that many people enjoy walking around with a soul that is scattered or incomplete. I say this because so many people do not examine their soul, nor do they bother to fix their broken soul. See, churches are empty today. They said, hey, post studies and sermons online and I will watch and I will study. Yet church websites are rarely visited. This is a very sad reality of the way things are in our world and a very sad reality of things for the soul. It seems that there are many people who live happily being incomplete spiritually. The truly sad part is that we have such a great potential for what we could do in this world that goes unfulfilled because our soul is empty. Our soul is complete because our hearts are not whole. We are unable to truly give it our all in this world. So I tell you today that the wounded and the broken spirits need to be mended. They need to be put together today as there are simply too many broken hearted and too many wounded, too many dead spirits that are doing nothing but bringing harm and hurt to others in our world today. As you have heard me say before, if you desire to be made whole in your soul, turn to the Lord for his helping hand. I can tell you again from my own personal testimony that the Holy Spirit will instantly go to work and start mending that broken spirit of yours if you lean on the Lord, if you depend on him, if you trust in him. I tell you today that if I were to look into that mirror, I tell you that I am not completely whole in my soul, but I know this. I know that the spirit is putting my soul together. I know that my soul is more complete today than it was yesterday. The picture, I believe it is clear enough to see. And I believe that there is a light that shines from me. I am not perfect, but I tell you today that I press towards that upward call of God. And I again encourage you to do the very same. Should you do so, the Holy Spirit will mend. And I tell you that the Holy Spirit will continue to mend and continue to put your soul together on a daily basis. The Holy Spirit will work on your inner man so much that even those that are around you will begin to notice that the puzzle is being put together even they will begin to see the image. They will begin to, in other words, see the true you that is on the inside. The more people that start to recognize our true image, the better it is as they too, we begin to have a desire to be made whole, to be made complete. One day when we are all gathered up and taken home by Christ, We will see each other, and we will see each other being a complete picture. The puzzle put all together. We will see each other, I want you to understand, we will see each other in our true form, shining with the glory of God. We will, I want you to know, we will recognize each other. And I tell you that we are going to rejoice with great joy as we will see each other as we have never seen each other before. 
we see each other as no longer being a broken and incomplete mess, yet we see each other being whole and happy. Those that he God's help will be a beauty to behold, as we will have been fashioned and we will have been made whole by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.